We have previously looked at convolutions and how, for example, I could generate a realization of a binomial variable by summing a load of independent realizations of Bernoulli variables with the same probability parameter. And the same idea can actually be done with another distribution that we have seen, the exponential random variables, to generate another common distribution, realizations of gamma variables. So if I've got W1, W2, W3, and so on, and each of these is an independent realization of the same gamma, of the same exponential distribution, exponential variable rate parameter beta. But if I've got alpha as a positive integer, then if I add up alpha of those exponential rate parameter beta variables, then the distribution of the sum of those should be a gamma distribution with first parameter alpha, second parameter beta. So the density function of S, the gamma distribution here, is beta to the alpha, S to the alpha minus one, e to the minus uh, beta S, divided by alpha minus one factorial, for S being non-negative. Now, I've told a little white lie in writing that down. We'll see in a few slides time. Um, but that is, Roughly speaking, true for now. At least it's true for the definition I've given so far, that for integer alpha, that is correct. And because exponential variables can only take non-negative values, a sum of them can only take non-negative values. So I'll actually get very different distributions, very different shapes. It can be... Um, a very flat distribution, it can be a modal value at zero, it can be interior mode, it can be many things. Now, all of those, when I defined it on the previous slide, I said if I'm adding an integer number of exponential variables, so if I had three exponential variables or ten exponential variables, then what I said on the previous slide was correct. But actually, I can relax the requirement for alpha to be an integer. I realize that slightly breaks the explanation of it as a sum of exponentials. But I could think of, all, of this almost as sort of interpolating between the points. And in this case, instead of having an alpha minus one factorial and the denominator, I've got a gamma alpha in the denominator where the gamma function um, is, well, you can think of it as an extension of the factorial values for the non-integer points between. So gamma alpha is the same as alpha minus one factorial if alpha is a positive integer. So let's say I've got two gamma variables, a uh, gamma alpha x, rate parameter one, and y, which is a gamma with uh, first parameter alpha y and rate parameter one. OK, so let me work out the sum of those, the distribution of s, which is x plus y, and r, which is the ratio of x to the total of x and y. So what happens if I sum two gammas that have the same rate parameter? And what happens if I work out of the total of x and y, how much of that is x, so the ratio of x to x plus y? So I very imaginatively call the sum and this ratio s and r. So what we've previously seen is we needed to rewrite these new variables, s and r, in terms of the old variable, so write the old variables x and y in terms of my new s and r. So the easy one to figure out is that x is equal to r times s, because x plus y times x over x plus y is rs. 
and then y is 1 minus r times s. So I now need to work out the Jacobian associated with this change of variable. So I work out the rate of change on the top line of x with respect to s and y with respect to s, and on the bottom line, x with respect to r and y with respect to r. And when I do those, I get that from my um, Jacobian. So the absolute value of its determinant is just s. So in order to work out the joint distribution of s and r, I'd write down the joint distribution of x and y, which is straightforward because it's just they're independent with the product of the two gammas. I then replace my x's with rs's, my y's with 1 minus r, s's, and multiply by the Jacobian. And then I still need to figure out the range of these variables. So joint density, as I say, isn't difficult to work out because it's just writing down two gamma densities multiplied together. Now what I've done here is I've replaced all of my x's with r s's. I've replaced all of my y's with 1 minus r times s. And then I've multiplied by another s at the end which is the, um, the absolute value of the determinant of the Jacobian. The thing to note here is that x over x plus y has to be between 0 and 1, because x and y are both positive, but x can't be bigger than x uh, plus y. So what it does tell me is that the ratio r has to be between 0 and 1, whereas s is the sum of two things that over the whole real line, 0 to infinity, so the sum of them is between 0 and infinity. So the range of this is s can be between 0 and infinity, whereas r can only be between 0 and 1. If I tidy this up and rearrange it, I've done a little bit of a trick here because I've got, um, I've introduced another gamma constant, top and bottom, gamma of alpha x plus alpha y, and I've introduced it on the top and the bottom of the fraction. So you can see it should sort of cancel out, but I've introduced it for a very particular reason. Because the way I've written that, you can notice of the, uh, the two main brackets in that term, the one on the left has s's in it, but no r's. The other one has r's in it, but no s's. Now at this point, you might actually recognize the form of the one on the left. The s to the uh, alpha x plus alpha y minus one, e to the minus s, divided by gamma of alpha s plus alpha y. In fact, we saw it on the previous slide. That's just a gamma density function. The other thing to note about the fact that I had this function of s but not r multiplied by this function of r but not s, where the ranges didn't even depend on each other, is that that means that these two new variables, s and r, are independent. And I can actually recognize, well, hopefully we've seen one of the distributions a few slides before, I can recognize that S is a gamma variable, albeit with slightly different parameters, but R actually has a standard distribution as well. So if I write it, if I just pull the two parts out and write them separately, because I don't need to integrate to get the marginals, because they're independent, I can just pull the two pieces apart, all of the S's together, all of the R's together. And the S is just a gamma variable. It's exactly what I started with for X or for Y, except instead of having 
first parameter alpha x or alpha y, it has first parameter alpha x plus alpha y. So in other words, if I have two gammas with the same rate parameter, if I take the um, distribution of the sum of them, I'll just sum the first parameters. And the other one is a little bit more complicated. This one has to only be between 0 and 1, but it's proportional to r to the alpha x minus 1 multiplied by 1 minus r to the alpha y minus 1. And that's a beta distribution with parameters alpha x and alpha y. Now, we will see more of that later in this subject, particularly in the context of uh, some Bayesian statistics, because a distribution that strictly never goes below zero or never above one can be very handy in some probability settings.